Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I want to talk about something that I probably wasn't going to talk about until someone emailed me and talked to me about it. Because it is his email, I will use his terminology, vertical versus horizontal workflow. So his, the premise of the, of the question here is comparing two different thoughts about how to approach creating a song. Whether it is, let's see, what, what was it? Um, horizontal being, uh, I'll, just, I'll just actually just read what he said. Horizontal being arranging, sketching, orchestrating, and other activities uh, that affect the production as a whole. And vertical being sound design, layering effects, other activities that only affect one section or a secondary aspect of the production. And I can kind of see that being as being a thing. So like uh, horizontal, given, you know, progression from beginning to end of a song, you've got, you know, your intros and arrangements and whatever, and the individual orchestration of particular instruments, and that kind of thing. You might think orchestration might only apply to like an orchestra, but as it turns out, no, but still a term. It means something against non-orchestrated orchestral stuff. Uh, and then vertical being like what specific sound design you're using and the engineering are, are behind it. So it's really a, it's really a question about engineering versus sort of music. And sort of my answer to what, what, what that is, like what to, how to approach that for making a track actually varies kind of wildly depending on your genre. So for example, given we were just talking about orchestrating stuff and orchestras, if I were to write a purely orchestral tune, I would probably start with a, a much a pretty basic layout of what the track is. I would have a beginning, middle, and end, and I would do so chronologically. And I might even I would probably write it out with a piano patch first. That's what I would do to get essentially the themes and the progressions down, and then I would orchestrate the shit out of it after I've done that. Like I will, I will then decide what instruments I'm using, how they're being arranged, what they're doing in between, that kind of thing. That well, like once I have a theme, that's what I'll do, right? But if like, I mean, I guess if we're talking about spectrum, so that's that's a very musical thing to do in a very musical kind of genre with extremely small amounts of sound design involved. In the sense that I'm not inventing the instruments; they're kind of already there, and the only real sound design decisions I'm making are like equalizations based ones, or just like what instruments I'm having layered against each other, like what kinds of articulations and that kind of thing. That's the kind of sound design I have control over, which is still extremely limited in comparison to the genres where you're making everything from scratch. So like that's a very musical kind of genre. And then there's the engineering kinds of genres, the sound design, really sound designy genres, like drum, hardcore, drum and bass, um, hardcore, uh, dubstep, um, neuro, anything, that kind of thing, glitch, anything. These are things, these are genres that are defined by their sound design. As such, if I'm going to do them, I'm probably gonna approach a more vertical concept where I'm focusing more on the engineering first. And there's actually a very clear reason for that. And it's not because that's what the thing. That's not, not because that's what the song focuses on. There are plenty of versions of these genres that have very melodic, um, centered ideas in them. But no, it's because how the sound, how the sounds are themselves, how they behave, how they move, how they act, what they're doing once they're being done will de will determine the arrangement. Because, like, can you imagine what? Um, like a Zomboy track would look like in pure MIDI format, right? If, if like, you just put down the notes of what the things actually are when they happen, that, so on and so forth, that would actually not very, that wouldn't be very representative of what the song actually did. Like, what, I just tried to say did and is at the same time, and I just said diz. What the song actually diz, that you, it wouldn't be representative of all of that, and not only that, but you wouldn't have arrived at that from just a musical perspective. Because, I mean... How often have any of you actually made the sounds that you hear in your head the first time you try to do it? Unless it's something stupidly simple, like, oh, I want to make a saw wave, or I want to make the dubstep bass, which is just two sine waves and some distortion. Like, that, when you get to the more complicated, like, really dense kinds of sound design, it's very unpredictable how it's going to turn out. So, like, <clears throat> in the past, when I've done tracks from scratch, you might have seen me start a song like this by working on sound design, not touching anything at all about, like, the arrangement or the progression or even, like, tempo. I will just make a sound because everything about that song is going to be determined by how that sound behaves. Certain kinds of motion aren't going to work if it doesn't behave very well. Certain, some sounds only work, uh, like, the octave higher than the subs. Some sounds only work at the sub level. So, like, I can't, or I can't arrange for there to be um, well, I mean, I can, but honestly, it's not its not going to work out as well if I try to arrange ahead of time and force things to be in a particular notational format when I haven't heard the sound. So I, for those kinds of genres, I will approach it from a very vertical kind of standpoint, which, I mean, it, uh, any of you who have had lessons with me will, will know that I usually advocate for getting a song like this by doing, it, by doing the drop first. So it is, it is a pretty intensely vertical slice. 
And that term, vertical slice, it actually is um, a term. I'm sure it's used in other other art formats as well, but and the one that I'm, I know it for is for uh, video game production. In fact, video game expos like E3, for example, will have demos of games, and they will use what's called a vertical slice. A vertical slice is essentially one little moment of the game that they essentially mastered to hell so that you can see what the, the game was like so that they can show it off. It's like a, it's, it's smaller than a demo. I mean, it's a demo in a literal sense. It's a demonstration of the game, but you're not playing it. Someone else on, someone on stage is or someone with a controller behind the screen somewhere. That That's what a vertical slice is. Uh, they've caused some kind of controversy over the years, you know, famously when like, uh, Aliens Colonial Marines was showed off. That's the vertical slice. And when the actual game came out, it was nothing like the vertical slice because it was the shittiest game ever made. A uh, more sort of not as bad one, well, still but pretty bad, was uh, Watch Dogs. And actually, this happens a lot with vertical slice game uh, demo dem demonstrations where the, the, the part of the game they show off and the way they show it off is too good. It's not actually all that viable for the whole game to be that way watchdogs when it was initially showed off was impressive as hell it's still kind of it's still honestly an impressive game but um it, its shortcomings wouldn't be so glaring if the original demonstration wasn't so awesome like that's the dangers of a vertical slice but and it's interesting that i use the same terminology it was mastered to perfection it was engineered to be a a, a, a very to be a a representation of what the game will ultimately be. And that's exactly what I advocate for when you're making this kind of um, super sound designy, ultra um, heavy EDM, electronic, Nero, whatever funk step track you're making. Like, do the drop first. So, and then fit, like, do it, do it, like, finish it. Like, make a four bar loop and then, like, master that all like it's done with everything in it, all of the big, very vertical slice of that entire track. And the reason for that is because now. Now you can arrange where it's going to go. You know how it's going to behave. You have the instruments now. You have all the instruments together. You know what they are. You know what they're good for. And you can write for them. Because now you know. You didn't know that before you did that. Unless you're one of the extremely few people who either A, makes a genre that's you know simple enough that you can just know what the sounds are, or B, actually can make the sounds in their head immediately because they're such ridiculous geniuses. That's an extremely rare thing to have happen. Just about everyone makes a song by putting stuff down until it sounds good. And it's incredibly hard to predict that unless you've done the same thing 10 million times and that's all you're ever going to do. Um, but like once you got your vertical slice, then you can finish a drop and then make the stick and half of the drop. And then you've got enough that you can extrapolate an intro from. And then you, from that, you can make a breakdown. And then you've got a song. Like that's... That's why that works. That's why when, like, because if you do the opposite, not necessarily the opposite, but if you try to make a track like that chronologically by beginning with an intro and then you, you do your intro, you're done with the intro, you make a kick-ass rise and it's like a super awesome intro, you have, an, you have a, I'm sure plenty of you have experienced this where you have an extremely hard time making a drop that actually, like, justifies how cool your intro is. And really think about it right now. How the hell ever could you? Really? For real. And a lot of you might be also thinking, well, plenty of songs I've heard, like, their intros don't sound anything like their drops. And, yeah, that's a whole other issue. But, like, it's a lot easier to avoid that if you do the drop first, because then you can make the bits in your intro from your drop. From your drop. Because now you know. God damn it. Let's eat the sushi. Um, and it makes it makes for the track to be a whole cohesive thing, because at that point, you, you, know, you know where you're going with the track. Versus, like, you know, the super orchestra track, it's all got, you know, orchestras and strings and brass or whatever. We already know what all that sounds like. We already know how all that works. The same thing with, like, metal tracks like uh, or any kind of rock or like band-influenced thing. There's not a lot of engineering that has to happen to allow you to get to the point where you can even write music. Which is, this thing, that whole thing is a big reason why presets, sample packs, templates, construction kits, and all of that exist. It's not, it's not entirely because people are lazy. Plenty of people are also lazy, there's that too, but, like... The reason why Nexus is such a big deal is because there are plenty of people who are extremely musically minded, plenty of people who are super, super good at the musical end of things, but they just hate the engineering or they're just bad at it. They're just bad at the engineering. And they just want to get to a point where they can write music. That's what they want. And for genres that are like that, you can write stuff from beginning to end chronologically. You can actually make that work because you know what the sounds are going to sound like. You can, you can write for them appropriately. You know how things are going to happen. And so that's when you can work horizontally. And the vertical part is really mostly about engineering. 
and if you don't like engineering then you just do sample packs or you do a genre that are built out of instruments that are have an expected sound like heart style or orchestra stuff or bare metal you know that kind of thing then you then you've got a particular kind of limitation that you can work with them to make the music that you want to make. But if you want to make super sound designy stuff and like you're not just cobbling together samples, you you're, you are much more better served by making the drop first in a very vertical fashion so that you can then get to the part where you can do it more horizontally. I uh, hope any of that made sense. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And also don't forget that I have a sale on lessons that uh, is ending on June 1st. You can schedule a lesson whenever you want to have it scheduled, but if you get the scheduling in before the end of June 1st, you get the sale. Currently, it's $40 an hour. When the sale's over, it'll go back up to $90 an hour. And as usual, have a nice day.